Well, this is one of my favorite times of the week, Rapiwa. And you know, you just brighten up my day with the stories that you bring us in Entrepreneur Friday, especially today, where you have a woman who was brave enough to just stop what she was doing and start something else after how many years? After lo decades of working, wow. actually. Okay. I think it, almost two decades it was. But yes, Siveka, a lot of people uh, don't understand the difficulties around entrepreneurship. And it's not always just about getting rich, this thing. It's also about empowering and uplifting the community situated around your business. Now, after years of working as a nurse in the private sector, the managing director of this uh, particular clinic, Gugu Timunye, has taken all that experience and established the Mpilo private clinic to provide quality and affordable health care to those who need it the most. And she joins me now. Uh, sister, thank you very much for your time this evening. Shall I call you sister or on a first name basis? <laughs> First name. All right, Gugu then. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you for having me. Um, it's very brave to go into a sector like healthcare, where there are a lot of providers, both public and private, who are trying to reach various communities. Talk us through your thought process nine years ago when you decided to go into it. Um, I will say, you know, I was a nurse f from birth. <laughs> <laughs> I was a nurse, I, was, uh, I didn't go to nursing because of the stipend that was received in those years when, when we were, st were still trained, but it was something that was burning right inside of me. And uh, 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 because when I remember, remember, my late father wanted me to be a doctor. And because I didn't pass or I didn't write my meds, my physics mm -hmm. in metric. I did physics, but I didn't write it because I was doing so many sub subjects. So because I didn't do physics at university, they couldn't take me to do the medicine. medicine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll, I left and then say, OK, you know, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be a nurse. And um, the other thing is I didn't go to a university to, for, for, for nursing. I went to a, a college that uh, it, in their years, it was called um, uh, Gangwani Nursing College, which is now Mpumalanga Nursing College. So uh, that was in 1993 when I, when I started. And um, my reason for starting my own um, uh, practice, it was, you know, um, the experience that I had, I, my, most of my experience, it was in the private sector. Uh, uh, I worked at Pretoria Heart Hospital, I worked at the Verhals Hospital, so I'm a Pretoria kind of a girl in terms of my career. And um, after that, I was in the NGO sector. That also uh, in the HIV AIDS field. That also brought a lot of, of experience in terms of management now, mm. you know, because I ended up being uh, ma managing and managing right. other, other, other sites. And, uh, and then, you know, with the, that was also funded by PEPFA. And I realized that, you know, and when the PEPFA funding is ending, because it was coming to, to an end in 2013, I said, I don't want to go back to the 12-hour shift anymore. A, a much as I love it, a, a cardiothoracic uh, ICU, I will go, to, I will go back to, to it at, at any given time. But at that time, I felt, yeah. you know, I need to do some, uh, something. And then, yes, then I started, I started this. Um, there was... Um, there was an email that I got that was saying, you know, uh, uh, some company which is empowering uh, black uh, 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 nurses who want to start their own uh, practices. Uh, practices. And I went and, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 we sat down, we, we, we agreed, and uh, later, uh, because they said to them, you know, they're empowering nurses, but at the later stage I, I realized that it wasn't em empowerment, but it was in, instead it was an engagement. They wanted to, they were just engaging nurses and they're still do, doing it. That's right. And the other thing, yes, and the other thing is, you know, for so long, I mean, why, why I say it is not em empowerment again, you know, uh, uh, when you get out of the franchise, you know, they just open another and another clinic few meters away from from, from you. Yeah, and I and for me, yes, yeah. and for me, that is not empower, em, 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 empowering. Empowerment. Yeah, and I want to talk about that saturation. Sorry to come in yes. there. Um, it's a very, talk about the, the industry and the level of service that is in Mpumalanga, which is where the clinic is yes. based. Mm -hmm. um, the lives that have been changed through the business. Uh, very briefly, what have you seen in terms of the trends of service provision and the change that Mbilo has brought there? Um... One thing that I can tell you is that, you know, I think as health professionals, we always have at the back of our mind, we have this thing that, you know, people have information. And for me, you know, working at a, a community level, it has taught me that uh, we, haven't, we haven't done enough. There is still a lot that we need, we need to do. Information 
still needs to be disseminated in so many aspects. I mean, you find a client that you think, you know, Rofiwa, you know, the educated person is on medical aid, but they have no cooking clue what, what, how their medical aid covers them, you know, up to what you can, you can do. And sometimes when you tell people, you know, the options that they, they have based on their medical aid and, and their option, I'm now talking of educated people, you know, it's like, you know, what? I've been on medical aid for the past five years, for the past 10, 10 years, and no, no one has ever said that to me. But then at the same time, there is also this thing of, you know, when you, the, the, the GPs and us, we're at the primary level. So the, the client will come to us firsthand. But when I see that you, whatever that you, 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 you present to me, it's something that I cannot help you with. I need to be honest with, with you. You know, I cannot make you come back and back and back. But I've seen again, that is again one of the challenges that we, 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 we're having. You yes. know, some of the colleagues, they don't want to refer clients. Very, very interesting. And then very finally, two quick questions I'll put into one there. Some of the biggest challenges you faced when it came to funding, how were you able to secure that? And the jobs that you're creating through the clinic? You know what? Currently, I'm not being funded. Whatever that I do now, I do it on my own, you know. And um, the challenges that, that we're facing is the nurses have been taken uh, 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 for granted, if that's the word, you know, for a lack of a better word, for too long, mm -hmm. you know. And nursing, it has been looked down upon for so many years. And it's like, it's, you know, you're looked down by your own colleagues, you know, your own colleagues, the other healthcare professionals, you look down by your, your own family that, ah, nurse, you know. You look down, you look down by the people that you're serving for the fact that at the end you're saying cuckoo, but there is a sister and there is a nurse mm -hmm. word in whatever, in whatever way that, that you're saying it to, to me. So, and also being a woman, you know, just being a woman, it puts you uh, up, on the back foot, you know, and yeah. it, 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 you, you, you feel abused in so many, in so many ways. People want to take you for granted just because you, you, are, you are a woman, just because I have this skin color that I have and you know it's unfortunate uh, I can't I can't change, change, change it well, let's end it on a positive note how many people have you employed it's three and a half that's good we get it somewhere we all have to contribute in one oh, yes way. but unfortunately as you say there are many challenges yes, that you still face as a woman um, entrepreneur in the country so that is of course Umbila private clinic founder Gugum Timunya talking about her story her journey into entrepreneurship